I've just opened the audio meter LabVIEW project and I'd like to demonstrate the basic technique for communicating between an application running on the desktop computer and a VI that's operating on the FPGA target. The first node that we see before entering the while loop is called Open FPGA VI Reference. This establishes the connection to a specific VI and when this node uh, executes it downloads the bit file associated with this particular VI down to the FPGA target board. We want the FPGA to operate once it's been loaded and I will also point out that you can choose a bit file as an alternative method for the FPGA target. Now when this node completes execution, the bit file is down on the FPGA and the FPGA is ready to go. I wanted to take a look at the insides of the FPGA itself. So I double clicked on that previous node and now we're looking at the VI that, op that, op that uh, operates on the FPGA. So I've replaced the slide switches with three front panel controls, A2 through A0. and this allows the host to manipulate the FPGA inputs directly. Now we pass in that reference into the FPGA, or into the while loop, excuse me, and we have a node called read-write control. This accepts the reference to the VI that's been opened. And here we see the three inputs and the eight outputs associated with the FPGA target. At the conclusion of the while loop, we can close that reference and that disables the uh, bit file down on the FPGA. Now for purposes of illustration here, I'm taking the loop index, extracting its lower three bits and passing that down to the FPGA target. I'm also observing the state of the eight LEDs as well. Again, you'll, when you run these pair of VIs, you actually see the thing operating on the FPGA development board, but this gives us some local views of those as well. Now I'm pacing the loop with a 100 millisecond wait And at any time that you are finished with this application, you can hit the stop button. That will bail out of the while loop and then close the VI reference. All right, let's take a look. And again, we see that the bar graph decoder inputs are running nicely. We see that the decoder outputs are doing what we expect as well. So you see it's really quite simple to establish a connection down to the FPGA target. All right, let me review some of these construction details in just a, a bit more detail. These are the nodes that you need to convert the integer data type first to a Boolean array and then to a cluster that allows the individual bits to be pulled out. The read write control node is available in the FPGA interface palette. And once this is connected to the appropriate reference, all of the inputs and outputs then become visible. So you don't necessarily need to have all of those visible, 
but this would be your choices. And if you expand the size of this node, you can expose some more uh, values or, or, you, or uh, more connections, or you can expose less connections, whatever you need. The OpenVI reference is also in the FPGA interface palette. as is the close FPGA VI reference. And that's the one that appears over here. The loop timing mechanism is located right here. And again, placing this inside the loop allows that loop then to be paced at that 100 millisecond rate. The while loop itself is available and you can create a default control and that generates the stop button as you saw earlier.